Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World for another episode of Ravensburg. So, things are afoot this morning. I got up, I checked my financial reports, and lo and behold, corn has just skyrocketed. The corn prices are way, way up. We look at our corn, um, where was that? There it is. Look at that. Way above anything we would normally see during the year, and I can tell you why. Look at that. 40,000 euros for that trailer of corn. Um, we've got great demand at the port down here, which is fantastic. We need the money. And we've got money coming in today. Today's going to be a big money day. I can feel it. I've already got a helper. Um, well, I'll tell you, I forgot that I, I had bought that small fertilizer spreader. And so I hired a guy to get out and take advantage of some of these local farmers because, frankly, um, they really want fertilizer. And the cows are not producing, well, let me say, the cows are producing like they normally do. However, we've gone through most of what they're producing. We've actually been cranking through it, so that's good. Very, very good. Um... But I've got that little fertilizer spreader, so why not use it on other people's fields? I mean, I like to use the manure when I can, but just because it saves me a little money, I don't have to buy the fertilizer. But in this case, I'll do what I have to do. Still be making money on those fields, and that's what's really important. Um, what else? Well, speaking of our cows, our cows have gone ballistic. <laughs> okay, not quite that bad. But we are up 40 cows. Yes, the births are happening just over and over. We're going to have even more today. Even more. And, uh, yes. We are up to over 150 cows. You know what that means? That means milk. Let the milk times roll. <laughs> That means daily income, which is going to be a beautiful, beautiful thing. The more of our cows that give birth, the more milk they produce, or the more cows are producing milk. And that means more cash for us. Now, what else is happening? Well, um, I did get the, uh, the logs moved, and I got them cut the best I could. I'm, you know, since I didn't use a tree harvester, they weren't automatically sectioned, so I hope I've got them in a reasonably decent loading size. <laughs> We're going to find out, and that's going to bring in some cash today. I think we might have our first milk sale today, today also, but I'm going to have to go over to the cow pasture and check. Not completely sure how that's going to sort itself out just yet. But right now, it's all about selling off our corn. Now, yes, I know I'm going to need corn for chickens. That is a given. Ooh, too far. Getting in a hurry, thinking about what's going on, and not paying attention to where I'm supposed to be turning. Um, but when the price of corn skyrockets the way that it does, yes, I'm going to need it for the chickens, but, you know, this, this is an offer I can't refuse. So saith the Godfather. An offer I absolutely, positively cannot refuse. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. 53,000 plus euros on the day, and it's only 8.30. <laughs> and uh, many fertilizer jobs that I will be uh, sending my helper on today. That takes care of our corn. Time to go back and check the cattle. And then probably see what we're going to do about those logs. Okay, how are our cattle doing this morning? They look fantastic. Very, very nice. And look at that. Over 15,000 liters of milk. That is a beautiful thing. Now, normally I don't think I would do this, but I don't have a way to haul milk yet. And I've never never used this uh, machine before, so I want to take a look and see what it's going to do for us. So I can have them come in and haul my milk. Right now, milk is selling for 
1,355 euros per 1,000 liters. That seems like a decent price. And if I sold all of my milk, because I can only, I can tell them to only pick up a little bit. But I can just max that out. Like so. And that's going to sell for 20465 but they're going to charge me 1523 So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. And they're going to bill me for shipping, and then I just made another twenty grand. The cows are starting to pay back. Good job, Bessie. <laughs> Very good job indeed. We like it when the cows start paying for themselves. Spent a lot of money on these cows, at least in time and energy. So, them paying something back, that's, that's a pretty big deal in my opinion. Now, I do already have some uh, equipment here to haul this lumber out. Oh, and our, our new little grass field here. It is... Uh, all ready to go it's ready to be mowed up and with the way our cattle are producing and there might be a deal on the horizon too I don't know yet for sure I've got some calls in but we will see we're gonna see how that plays itself out but with the way our cattle are growing up we're gonna need all the grass we can get All right, let's see if we can't get these logs loaded and ready to haul. Seems to be working out as planned. Uh-oh, I've got one that's a little bit long. You know what? I'd better go cut that off. Because it's going to jack up my pile if I don't. If I can just take that out of there. Ah! <laughs> Here, I'll let the trailer do it. The trailer can do it much better than I can. See? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, okay. And these look like they're probably a little bit long also. Uh, nope, they look okay. They look fine. There's one more. There it is. Okay, that's that. I think we're going to have more than, uh, more than one load, which is very, very, very good. I, I didn't feel like there were that many trees left over here, but at the same time, it appears there were more trees than I anticipated. We'll see. We're going to see. But if you'll recall, the timber made us a good chunk of cash. A good chunk of cash last winter. And with a little bit of luck, it will do the same for us today. Going to be a good money day on the farm. Frau Baumann should be quite pleased. Oh yeah, see, we're getting pretty darn full here. I'm going to try to get just a few more on if I can. That looks pretty darn good to me. Let's strap those bad boys in. And as I remember, sneaking in through here was just a little bit tricky, but luckily I just saw the train went by, so I don't have to worry about colliding with the train if I get too close to the tracks. Here we go. Here we go. We got this. Oh, better unstrap them. What do we got? 61,000 and I've got more logs to haul. Let's see if we can get those last couple off there. There we go. Uh, make that 63,000. 63,000 euros of timber. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. So I'm going to go grab the rest and see where we end up because money be flowing <laughs> okay second load of timber coming in and this one's ugly 
<laughs> this one's very ugly. Apparently I, I missed a few cuts somewhere. That's okay. It'll still sell. Yeah, that's, that, that's not too hot there, Parv. Got one sticking off the end. Anyway, let's see what we got. Another 46 grand, probably after these two logs decided they want to give up the ghost. It would stick for some reason. Yep. Oh, there's still one just hanging up there. Let's see if we can't pull it down. There. Maybe it'll sell now. There it goes. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, yes! That's what we've been needing to see on this farm. A nice income. Absolutely. Okay, time to return this uh, log trailer and get busy. And of course, I've got a helper, you know, I told you about doing fertilizer, but that helper is completely unreliable today, and I keep having to babysit him. I will do that from time to time, apparently. But there are several several things I need him to get done today, so we'll see how that all sorts itself out. Anyway, uh, headed to the shop. So, you know, I've been thinking about Germany a lot, and uh, one, one thing that I was really thinking about Germany was that there has to be some interesting places to see aside from castles you know the Rhine River Valley obviously is going to be a big destination for a lot of people it's a beautiful place to see um, but what else is there in Germany to catch our interest one of the things that I came across and uh, I'm gonna butcher this you already know I'm gonna butcher it you've heard me butcher far too many of these before already um, but it's this place it's called the Volker Schlacht Denkmal. Volker Schlacht Denkmal. And it is in Leipzig, or Leipzig, depending on your pronunciation, I suppose. And what this is, it's a beautiful monument um, that was erected in 1913. It was unveiled in 1913. I'm sure it took much longer to build. But it's got this fantastic reflecting pool in front of it, and it's a monument that dates back to the Napoleonic Wars. Um, it's it's a commemoration of the soldiers who fought in the Napoleonic Wars for Germany. And if you don't know, um, the Napoleonic battles took place in 1813, so they didn't did not get this monument built for a hundred years. But it is absolutely fantastic, and I strongly recommend taking a look because it is, it's absolutely gorgeous. Now something else to check out is um, the Old Town Hall in Bamberg. Bamberg, Germany. This field's not going to take us long to mow at all, by the way. And then it's going to be, you know, with all this newfound cash, I think it's time to just pay out for a wind rower because frankly um, we're gonna be doing an awful lot of grass and I keep leasing wind rowers but anyway the old town gate in Bamberg um, is a very cool very cool landmark you know it's it's one of those half timbered buildings that's built right on a bridge and we've talked about you know all these homes and houses there was one I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head but you know it was a town that had built a bunch of housing and shops right along a bridge well this old town hall is built on the bridge also and I guess the legend behind it is that there was a, a bishop in the city and the bishop said um, you can't build anything on existing land so in order to get around this bishop's ruling, they decided to build the town hall on a bridge in the middle of the river. The river wasn't considered existing land. <laughs> so Bob's your uncle. They said, all right, bishop. Well, we're not having any of this. We need a town hall, and we're building it right here in the middle of the river, and there's nothing you can do to stop us. So yeah, the, uh, the, the town hall in Bamberg very very cool to see 
Well, that was quick and painless, relatively speaking. And these mowers are looking a little bit rough, aren't they? Gonna have to do something about that. Well, since I have the mowers loaded up and trucking, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. Why? Because I can. And I would say it's free, but it's not. <laughs> it's not going to be free at all. In fact, I'm going to run my sunflower field right here. That our sunflowers are looking very, very nice. I'm going to come over to this, this pasture. Why am I coming to this pasture, mind you? Well, I'll tell you. Because I've had my eye on this pasture for quite some time now. Our cattle are really starting to come in. It's 150,000 euros, but it's now my pasture. And since it's my pasture, and since I've already got my mowers loaded up and trucking, I'm going to come in here and mow it out because I know it's ready to go. So that will allow us to make even more silage. And I'll get a better feel for exactly what I'm up against on this pasture. There's some old hay left behind up here too that I wasn't able to collect because I didn't own the land. Now I own the land. It's mine. All mine. Well, all Frau Baumann's technically. Now, another interesting sight to see in Germany, if you ever, ever find yourself there. And, man, why wouldn't you? Germany just seems like such a fascinating place. Um, the Aachen, or Aachen, I'm not sure. Again, butchering. <laughs> um, it's the cathedral. It's actually located in Belgium, or near the border of Belgium, I should say. And they started building this thing in the 8th century. So in the 700s, this thing started getting built. It's absolutely beautiful to look at. The interior is fantastic, but I don't have a good image of it, unfortunately. Um, it was built by the King Charlemagne. And it was the location um, for a long time of the coronations of the kings. Now, from what I've been told, the city of Berlin is filled with all kinds of amazing historic buildings, which, you know, you would expect. I'm sure Berlin is a very old city. One of the most historically significant and still amazing to see is the Reichstag. It's very historically significant. Um, it actually goes back to the 19th century, so it was built in the 1800s. Um, and it has been renovated. It had some, has some major renovations since even, you know, recently as, uh, as early as the 1990s. And of course it was severely, severely damaged during World War II. But after World War II, or following the end of the Cold War, I should say, um, and the reunification of Germany, Berlin was chosen as the overall capital. And the Reichstag now represents the seat of, of uh, government in Germany. It's an absolutely fascinating building. It would be the equivalent, you know, for those of us in the U.S. of, of visiting the United States Capitol building. Not quite the same history there, but still. Something very, very interesting to see. For you hiking enthusiasts mountain enthusiasts, rock climbing enthusiasts, there's the Zugspitz or the Zugspitze it is the highest mountain peak in Germany it's located um, near the town of Garmisch and I guess it's got some fantastic skiing so you know hiking boots uh, snow skis whatever your preference the Zugspitz has it for you. 
There's also a train that will uh, take you up to the top, apparently, called the Zahnradbahn. Zahnradbahn, something like that, Harv. <laughs> And one of the cool things about this uh, this mountain peak is that if you go up to the summit, you can actually view four different countries at the same time. So that's the Zugspitze. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. I, I'd love to see that. Would love to see that. Of course, there's a million things I'd love to see. One of these days... One of these years. Oh, just cleaning up some of the weeds that got left behind. The weeds are apparently very stubborn on this pasture, but hey, life goes on. Okay, well, this day is pretty rapidly coming to a close, although we will have light for quite some time. Um, I'm going to finish up this grass field. Just knock out a few of these little tiny spots uh, probably get my help see if my helper can't do a little bit of something more before the end of the day and I am going to also run to the shop and see about picking up a wind rower because I'm obviously gonna need it oh this is not mm, I better I better check my calendar very quickly um, that's, that's this one. We are in good drying times right now. I do not, I absolutely positively do not, and we're looking at, oh, this is today, so good, bad drying. I need to have this grass collected by 9 o'clock tomorrow because I don't want to risk it turning into hay. I don't need the hay, I need the straw, or the the uh, silage so hmm yeah we'll see how that sorts itself out too see you tomorrow i am getting a very early start today gosh it's not even 6 a.m yet but you can see the sun comes up early in the summer around here very very early and i brought the massey home last night with the fertilizer spreader on it because well my helper did such a good job yesterday brought in almost oh gosh it was 27 28,000 something like that oh look out car sorry <laughs> um quite a quite quite the uh, nice little profit from our local farmers yesterday so nice to have that option now very very nice it's really going to help move us along and i'm going to get him working on field 26 just across the river here and those boats are loud although unfortunately we are approaching we are approaching Herr huber territory <laughs> nah we we're not going to hold grudges right we're not going to be bitter we're not going to be annoyed And interestingly, you know, I've got 174,000 right now, um, but I did buy a wind rower. So I didn't buy a big wind rower. Uh, it's about, what, nine meters or so? Yeah, that's about right. It was 30,000 euros, brand spanking new, but I need to get it cleaned up and put away because I did want to make sure that all of that grass got put swept into windrows so that it wouldn't turn to hay and I need to collect it ASAP if I want to turn it into silage which is my goal today absolutely now I also sold off the last little bit the last little bit of uh, timber that was over there still brought in about 11,000 just over 11,000 euros that was no no small task let me tell you it helps when you plan ahead, or I guess I just didn't know. I missed a couple of uh, trees that I had cut. And... Oops. Oh well. Life will go on. I'm not going to spend a lot of time farting around with this because I've got grass to collect. And I've got a few more interesting things to see in Germany. You know, one of the things about Germany that's really been intriguing me, and I guess there was some part of my brain that sort of knew this, and then there's another part that's going... Um, 
wow, that's amazing. But how old Germany is. I mean, Germany is ancient. You know, it's it's been around for a long, 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 long time. One of the oldest countries there is, near as I can tell. And actually, before I can even collect grass, I have to feed the cattle. I know they are starving, so let me get that done. Well, that didn't take too long. Not too long at all. Um, I kind of uh, have done the cattle feed so much at this point that I've got it down to a science. Yeah, it's, it's well, you know, it's every day. Almost every day. And I've actually just was discovering this morning that I've got a bit of a concern on my hands because I'm not sure I'm going to have enough straw to get through until next year. That could end up being an issue. Not an issue that I'd like to have, by the way. Lack of straw. Well, I mean, it's not the end of the world. If we run out of straw, so be it. But I'd rather not. I think that goes without saying. We'd rather not run out of straw since we are somewhat manure dependent on this farm. Not completely, as we saw this morning, but we still like to save that money where we can anyway I should have quite a bit of grass to collect this particular field our brand new field get this little schmidge along the edge if I can well look at that my helper has already knocked out <laughs> already knocked out uh, his job fertilizing that field over there so I'll need to go get him sorted here at some point See if there's something else he can keep working on. So, Rothenburg Obdeb Tower. Rothenburg Obder Tauber. Speak slowly, Harv, and you won't have these problems. Um, is interesting, and the reason it's interesting is because you hear a lot about fairy tale villages around Germany. Um, you know, they look like they stepped right out of a storybook. And so I wanted to include one. It is... A, a you know a very big destination for people who want to experience old Germany that kind of thing and you know this this town dates back to the 13th century the 1200s it goes back a long long way you know it's all the half timbered houses um, it overlooks the Tauber River which Rothenburg of der Tauber means uh, my best guess, based on what I know, educated guess I should say, is Rothenburg on the Tauber, meaning on the river, on the Tauber River. With that said, um, you know, it's got houses, it's got churches that date all the way back to the 15th and 16th century, and then there's actually a town hall tower, a town hall tower there, man my ability to speak English is awful. Why am I trying German too? <laughs> anyway, um, there is a 13th century town hall tower sitting right in the middle. Absolutely fantastic. You can actually drive under that tower. It's, it's pretty spectacular. You know, I mean, you might want to get the true experience and go through on a horse and buggy or something. But, uh, yeah, I think that would be fabulous to see, you know, stepping right right back in history. One that is very intriguing to me that I would love to see is the Black Forest. A lot's been said about the Black Forest, um, and the Black Forest actually dates back, I mean, obviously, throughout time. But not only that, and I've got a full load of grass, woohoo! Um, you know, even the ancient Romans, as far back as Julius Caesar, made mention of the Black Forest, also known as the Schwarzwald. It's in the southwestern part of Germany. It takes up a good portion of the southwestern part of Germany. And the reason it's called the Black Forest is because it has a very dense tree canopy, meaning the leaves that sit up on top are very, very tightly packed and it creates a very dark and mysterious look. Ooh. And nope, not there. Now we're going to find out if our bunker silos are going to function properly. One of the things that it's uh, very well known for actually is 
is having many, many villages that seem to have stepped right out of a storybook also. Storybook villages in Germany apparently are a very a real thing and B a very common thing. But the the Black Forest pretty much, you know, has everything you could possibly want from a destination, especially if you're outdoorsy. Um, you know, it's got uh, there's I mean in the forest itself there are many towns and cities, but beyond that Beyond that, there are many, many alpine lakes. Uh, mountain biking is very popular there. Also, hiking, obviously. Um, well, there's even a town that has a university. So, you know, the Black Forest is large enough to uh, to house a lot, giving you plenty to do. I think, you know, if you just planned a trip to Germany to visit the Black Forest, I think that would sufficiently occupy your time. But personally that's one I would absolutely love to see. Now something else that would be really interesting to see on a visit to Germany is called the Holstentor in Lübeck. And the Holstentor is basically um, a city gate. It's one of two remaining city gates that were built in 1464. So if you can imagine, you know, this whole town surrounded by uh, by walls, you know, castle walls or ramparts or whatever you want to call them and and this gate is if you wanted to come into the city you had to come in through this gate it's absolutely fascinating to look at even through a photograph and visiting it in person would absolutely be fantastic um just you know there's something about old archae or not archaeology um yeah old buildings <laughs> <laughs> old architecture that's the word I'm looking for old architecture that I find fascinating okay well I didn't quite get done in time God knows I tried my hardest but you can see <laughs> the last of the grass has turned to hay Ugh. I was trying to avoid that I told you I told you I needed to get that grass taken care of ASAP to make silage out of it and lo and behold I was right Sometimes it sucks a little bit to be right. <laughs> I have to tell you. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, whatever. Well, I've got this trailer so I can... I mean, it's not like we can't use hay, too. I just wanted silage more. And you can see <laughs> I've made a, ro a royal mess of this bunker silo. At least it's working, knock on wood. Um, yes, I was, I was trying to pull through and... Uh, got stuck and my trailer just kept unloading and unloading and unloading and now it's piled way up so I'm not sure how that's going to sort itself out when I get into compacting this I guess I'll go grab that hay put it away I know we were getting short on hay but I'm planning to make clover hay with our clover field anyway that's all right our herd keeps growing and I just got some news um well, I'll tell you about that in a minute a little bit I'm going to collect this hay, I guess, get it off the field, and tell you about the Brandenburg Gate. The last little tidbit of information I'm going to impart to you today is if you're ever in Germany and you happen to be in around near or near Berlin, you would serve yourself well to make sure to stop by the Brandenburg Gate. It is a brilliant, brilliant piece of monumental architecture. Uh, from the 18th century, it did. It was built in the 18th century. Um, it's the entryway to Unter den Linden, or Under the Linden, which is a boulevard that is um, lined by linden trees, and it used to be the direct route if you wanted to visit the palace of the Prussian monarchs. It's one of the most famous landmarks in Europe and it even has a more modern uh, symbolism because people have taken to recognizing it as a symbol of the reunification of East and West Germany and if you don't know about uh, East and West Germany you're too young um, well that was the result of World War II uh, 
Germany was divided into two separate countries, essentially. One communist and one a republic. I believe it was a republic because of the, well, the splitting of spoils after World War II between the Allies. And I'm not going to give you a history lesson. If you're interested in World War II and what happened to Germany, I suggest you read a book. <laughs> or watch one of many, many, many TV shows about it. Actually, a decent amount of hay on this. Now, about that deal. So... I know Herr Huber's in trouble. He's been in trouble. Made really no secret about that. I mean, you know, this is a, a small area, so it's not like word doesn't get around when things are going poorly. And his cattle pastures and barns are effectively bursting at the seams. It seems like his cattle are still being cared for, at least, so, you know, the neglect I was talking about... Um, doesn't seem to be happening. That's a very good thing. But, even though he's, I, I'm not his, let's just say I'm not his favorite person. We'll just leave it at that. I'm not his favorite person. Um, <laughs> for a multitude of reasons now. I mean, he fired me. I got a little payback on him. Enough said. I made a deal with him that's going to expand our herd even more and speaking of which let's take a look at our herd 165 we are up 52 cows and look at the milk they're cranking out 21,000 liters since we sold yesterday they've produced 21,000 liters of milk our herd is going to be the best herd in Germany Anyway, um, I, oh, what am I doing? I don't want hay in my silage. <laughs> um, I made a deal with him. And I am going to buy 70 head of cattle for 50,000 euros. I almost said dollars because that's always my fallback, but... 70 head of cattle for 50,000 euros. Now, they're not going to be producing milk yet. They're going to be young. I'm going to have to raise them up like I like I always do. But, you know, they're basically newborns. So, um, you know, he hasn't fed them up. He hasn't fattened them up. They haven't grown bigger or anything. So, why am I going to pay full price? And, you know, he's in a bit of a pickle. I'm, I'm doing him a favor and he'll be doing me a favor. At his heart, he is a fairly pragmatic businessman, so convincing him of this was not the biggest challenge. Um, he is a businessman that is capable of putting personal feelings aside when he knows what the best thing to do is. So I will be going over there. I'm going to see if he won't loan me his cattle trailer. If you remember, he had a nice big one so that I can haul that 50 head over here. Fingers crossed. But I think that's going to do it for this episode of Ravensburg. I very much appreciate you coming along for the ride, as always. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. And until next time, take care.